once again in the Corvette section of my garage. If you've been on this website before, you know I'm a huge Corvette fan. In fact, we probably have more Corvette accessories on this website than any other vehicle. It's probably the most accessorized vehicle other than Harley Davidson you can buy. And this is the ultimate Corvette. This is the ZR1 2009, uh, the most powerful Corvette ever made, the most powerful car ever made by General Motors. Um, let's take a look around it. I really like this color. This is a new color for uh, 2009. Car weighs about 3,350 pounds. The shape is similar to the uh, standard Corvette, although there's a lot of little subtle things you can't see. Fender flares, things of that nature. Got this clear plastic window here, so you can see the uh, LS9 supercharged engine in there. 638 horsepower. Unlike the Z06, which is a 427 cubic inch block, this is 376 cubic inches. The secret is that Eaton supercharger, but we'll talk more about that later. 20 spoke, 19 inch front and 20 inch uh, rear wheels. Michelin Pilot Sport, two tires are on there. Standard carbon ceramic drill disc brake rotors. You got the standard magnetic selective ride control with track level suspension. Got the wider carbon fiber front fenders with ZR1 specific dual vents on there. You know, there's a story going around that there's this clear coat over this carbon fiber is $60,000 a gallon. And I thought, well, that can't be right. And then I checked it out and yeah, it is true. It's some special high tech thing to keep the sun from uh, cracking or bleaching out the carbon fiber. So $60,000 a gallon. You don't want to be going in trying to get a little bottle of touch up because it's not going to happen. As you see, the interior is a bit upgraded over your standard Corvette. And you've got controls on your steering wheel here, you know, for volume and things like that. You've got an adjustment there for your suspension, for touring or sport. You see, the more expensive the car, the nicer the bong. You ever notice with a cheaper car, you open it, <laughs> make that, <laughs> but when you're in the scale of car, a Cadillac, oh no, it's like angels hitting a little gong, bong, oh, my key's in it. Uh, let's open up the hood, let's show you what we got in here. As I said, it's all new LS9 supercharged 6.2 liter V8 producing at minimum 100 horsepower per liter. 604 foot-pounds of torque. Top speed is 205 to 210. You took the limiter off there, you could probably go 215. Uh, that's a sixth generation uh, supercharger developed by Eaton. Pretty bulletproof engine. There's no oil leaks, there's no mist anywhere on the engine. It's got a brand new uh, six-speed manual transmission, twin disc clutch. I really love the fact that they put a lot of time and effort in developing a proper six-speed transmission. The top speed is achieved in sixth gear, not fifth gear. You know, in most six-speed transmissions, the sixth gear is an overdrive gear. In this, it's a top speed gear. This is your heads-up display right here that flashes RPM, speed, water temperature, flashes it on your windshield so you can literally see through it, which is kind of a cool safety feature. Corvette's the only car I know that has that, and it's, and it's not a gimmick, it's really beneficial. The coolest thing about the ZR1, ha, the pierre de résistance, <laughs> right here. Can you read that serial number? The very first ZR1. Come on, let's take it for a ride. People think this little pushrod V8 is somehow not very sophisticated. And although it might not be as sophisticated as a quattro valve European car, it is proven technology taken to the 10th tenth, tenth. I mean, it's a pretty amazing motor. A tremendous amount of torque, over 600 foot-pounds of torque, which is a huge, huge amount. That's uh, probably 100 or 150 foot-pounds more than the Lamborghini or the Ferrari. Because we Americans, we like that low-end grunt, and that's what this has. And then, of course, once that supercharger pulls up, it pulls like a train. This Corvette is also the most powerful sports car built in America. The Viper uh, had the title for a while with their 600 horsepower V10. This is now 638. That's a pretty substantial jump. And it's a lighter car. I think a better handling automobile. I like Vipers, but this Corvette's got the edge. As I mentioned earlier, you've got the carbon fiber brakes. Uh, the same brakes that are on the Enzo Ferrari. Not similar, not kind of like, the same brakes. Like all contemporary Corvettes, you have three uh, selections here. Your regular, uh, just normal driving. You have your traction system off and competition mode. I always drive in competition mode. I, that's what I like. It just seems best to me. These magnetic shocks, fantastic. You know, GM pioneered those. 
I think even Ferrari and some other companies use them as well. They won't give GM credit, but that's where it came from. And it really makes the car ride very nicely. I mean, when you're in the touring mode, not in the competition setting, it really does ride like a Cadillac. Whatever you used to think about Corvettes, forget about with this car. I mean, this has 638 horsepower. The McLaren F1 has 627. The SLR Mercedes has, what, 617. The Aston Martin only has 510. This is the performance bargain of the decade. This car will easily run with the 430 Ferrari, the uh, Carrera GT. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, at least at the time of we're doing this uh, video, this car on stock tires holds the record at Nuremberg Ring. What is it, 7 minutes, 26 seconds, something like that? Pretty amazing. I love these things. I love the fact that they're built in America. I love the fact they're built in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I like the fact you can call up a guy on the line and talk to the guy who can build your car. That's pretty cool. They couldn't be prouder to build them. I mean, it's a real dedicated workforce down there. They love these cars, and it shows in the workmanship. Now, if you've never been to the Corvette factory in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you got to go. It's a real treat. Uh, we had John Fitch here recently at my garage. He was one of the guys who started the Corvette race team uh, with uh, Briggs Cunningham, uh, one at Sebring, did all the races in the early 50s and 60s. There's a lot of Corvette heritage, and it's all down there at the museum. I've got about four or five Corvettes. I've never had any problems with them at all. Bulletproof cars. And if you do have a problem, like I say, it's a Chevy. You fix it with a hammer. You go down to a Chevy dealer, and you know, you got an exotic supercar at uh, Chevy Cobalt prices, really, in terms of repairs. Uh, I don't have to tell you what it costs to fix a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. You know, whenever I think we've reached the pinnacle of high performance in street cars, a few years goes by and then it goes higher and higher. And I think with the upcoming emission standards and, you know, a lot of the environmental stuff that's happening, this is probably the most powerful Corvette you'll see for a long, long time. And I'd be surprised if anybody breaks uh, this Corvette's numbers anytime soon. It's the greatest Corvette in history. And I think it's, well, it is the most powerful car General Motors has ever produced in their whole hundred years. Like uh, the Z06 Corvette, this has the uh, trick muffler system with the solenoid that opens up over three grand and uh, makes it a bit more, some people might say louder, I say melodious. This is the greatest American car in the history of our country. This is what the founding fathers wanted us to be driving. This is what they did that whole constitution thing for. One of these. All right, maybe I exaggerate a little. You get the idea. No, I don't know what you can do to this car to get more power out of it, but since it's serial number 0001, I'm going to keep it just the way it is. Well, that's about it for this week. I'm going to drive on down to Bowling Green, Kentucky and thank the men and women who built my car personally. See you later.